Good afternoon. <laughs> I thought I would talk today because, again, people have such mistaken ideas on what it takes uh, to get to realization. Uh, you know, I don't know what people's minds are about this, but again, it takes lifetimes of work. You know, like I said, I remember many of my last, of uh, my prior lifetimes, and the one before this, I was a monk and uh, was doing this ceremony called the Chod, and uh, they were saying, you know, and I, I said, oh, this is great. I thought it was all symbolic and everything. Well, it's not just feeling like it's symbolic. You know, and that's what people think. They think that you have an aha moment or it's some kind of symbology and that's it. And you're intellectually going to get it. And that's that. Well, that's not what takes place. In that lifetime, I was a monk and I had vivid recall of this here. It was like I was reliving it again. And I had no idea about that type of ceremony in this lifetime had no conscious ideations about it until this experience um, came forward. But you invite the hungry ghosts and you invite these things to feed on your flesh to show you that it's illusion. Well, it becomes very real. If you think you don't feel it, oh, you feel it. And you are terrorized by this like a demonic type things and you feel it tearing your flesh and it becomes very, very real. I went crazy in that lifetime because I was not prepared for it. And that's why you don't do these deeper practices unless you are ready for it because it's not a joke. You know, people think it's fantasy notion. You're going to fantasize about it, whatever. It's not fantasy when you're actually going through these things. This is like, you know, when you have the Kundalini awakening, it takes a good 30 years of full blown. And once it's open, I'm not talking about a little pranic surge and you think you can control it. In a genuine Kundalini awakening, you can't control it. It's there, it's 24 seven, okay? So again, you know, there's reasons why they say madness or death can follow in a kundalini awakening if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, this is why you need to do, I give the practice of the balanced breath, it's so important. These things are very important. How to surrender in the midst of it, understanding what's going to come, because people think that, you know, it's all fun and games. Well, it's going to show you everything, you know, that you think it's going to challenge everything. When it opens up, all of a sudden you're seeing auras, you're seeing lights, you're hearing sounds, the nod is there, all these different sounds are playing. Everything is so enhanced. You can hear people talking like four rooms away. I could barely go into a restaurant. It was so loud and you could hear everything going in the kitchen. I mean, it was miserable. You walk in a building in San Francisco, they're on a roller system and it feels like it's going like this. I mean, everything is intensified. So intense. And then again, like I said, one moment you're feeling really tiny, next second you're feeling like you're a giant. It's all these experiences. And it's not fun. You're having visions. You're flying in the air. Your consciousness is above the trees. Some people wish they could have these experiences, but when you're going through it 24 seven, it's heavy. It's like being on a major, you know, people want to take ayahuasca. They want to take, you know, peyote. They want to take these things. But with Kundalini, it's there 24 seven and you cannot get away from it, okay? You're having visions, you're in different realms, 
you see God, you see goddesses, there are interactions. You come to a point where anything you want to know intellectually, you can know it in a heartbeat like that. You're healing people, you're feeling everything that's going inside of another person's body. Okay, all of these things take place. You have challenges that come up. And any fear you have ever had, it gets multiplied tenfold and is in your face. You will have to face this challenge of absolutely demonic entity. Absolute terror that you have to stare down and learn how to go beyond it. Okay, it's not a joke. It's why my book is called From Hell to Heaven, because really you walk through hell. And this can go for a number of years. People talk about the dark night of the soul. Okay, that can go on for a number of years, the dark night of the soul. And you feel everything that's not just what was going on with me. I could feel what was happening in the planet. And it was so intense you couldn't take another breath. You will pray for death, I guarantee it, literally. You don't know how many times I prayed for death. Because you don't think you can even take another breath. That's how difficult, how devastating it is. Okay. And again, you feel the pain of humanity and you cannot breathe. It is such a weight. It is such a torture. And you pray for that to come to an end. And then you get what's like a death. First, you go through the intense fear. You get beyond that. And you're in the middle of the floor thinking your hair is going to turn white. And I mean the most intense evil you can imagine is in your face. And you have to learn how to deal with it and not give it energy so it dissipates and it strangles its hold on it. And once you get past that, then again you start feeling the weight of humanity. Okay? You have all the temptations that come up. Look at what Christ went through in the Bible, and you'll get a little idea of what it takes to go to realization. You have the temptations. You have the satanic drama that you have to go through and beyond, the hell realms. Okay? It's going to show you, you think this earth is solid? Think again. It's going to show you nothing is solid. Nothing is what you think it is. And these are the types of experiences you will have day in and day out for years and years and years and years. And it's not some intellectual claptrap. Okay. It's a very tough journey. So again, you know, you pray for death, and then you get like a zombie. You have no feelings. You have nothing. And that's even worse than feeling the pain of the world. Then you pray for resurrection. Okay? So people don't understand what it takes. And then you come to the last point where you have to surrender totally. And it's the death before death. And if you don't think it feels like you are dying, think again. You go through the death before death. And it's terrifying. Okay? You don't know whether you're dying or you're going to be utterly and totally possessed. Because this is no man's land. And I guarantee it's the most fearful thing you will ever encounter. People think it's a joke. It's not a joke. Okay. okay. But in a blink of an eye, that's done. And when one passes, and you have to absolutely, totally, 100% surrender, let go. 
and pray that God is going to bring you through it. It's not a joke. Okay. And when God brings you through it, and you're on the other side, there is no consciousness of this realm whatsoever. It doesn't exist nor has it ever existed, nor have you ever existed. The only reality is that God essence. And all the ideations you had about life, about spiritual paths, about religiosity, about who and what you are, are done in a moment stripped bare of everything you thought you had gathered and collected. In one fell swoop, it's gone forever. Okay, so people have no idea what it takes to get to realization or what realization is. All these fantasy notions they have. It takes walking a path, going through again, going through fighting the evil, getting beyond that, laying your life down, absolutely surrender about challenging everything you ever thought you knew, and then some, okay? And when one comes out of it, everything has changed and nothing has changed at the same breath. It's the same world you're looking out at. But your whole interaction is now on a whole different level. Because now you've just come out of this and you, you find out you don't exist. You've never existed. The only reality is that divine is. Okay? So if you want to gather and collect things to make your ego stronger, this is not the thing to do because... When I, they say your ego's gone, it just doesn't mean that, oh, you become like a, uh, oh, I'm going to become so humble now. That's what people think. It has nothing to do with it. Okay? It means there is no identification with body and separation as a me. There is no feeling of being a me any longer. And you can't explain what it is to be in that consciousness to anyone because they don't think it exists. It's not in their realm. They can't imagine what it is to be without thoughts, without that drama, hearing some unending litany of, of stories going across the screen. So if they can't experience that, obviously you can't have experienced that. That can't be your reality. You're lying. Why would, why would there be any need to lie about something like that? Okay. <laughs> That's the fact of what remains. Okay. It's a totally different reality. Okay. But all the driving baggage that one has growing up and all that is ended. It's finished. It no longer exists. It got left at the station. It's like you packed up all the crap that you've been dragging for lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of stories and dramas and identifications and ideologies. And, and all the baggage got left. There's no more. You, you start, again, like a clean slate. <laughs> One comes back, and, and it's like the great uh, joke. It's a great universal joke at the end. Okay? Because you couldn't have gotten away from it if you tried. It's always present, yet you are so far away, you might as well be in another freaking universe. Okay? So it, at one time, it's right there, but you might as well be in another damn universe. Okay? That's the reality of it. But again, you know, once you've done the journey, 
and I traveled from here to India, gave up everything I owned a number of times along the way to get to the next step. Okay. And you have to go on faith. And you have to want it more than your next breath. You want to have it like a dying man wants that breath of air when they're under the water. That's how much you have to want it. And be willing to die to get it. Okay. Does that sound attractive to people? I don't think so. <laughs> You don't go into it and say, you know, well, like the Indian saying, it's a good day to die. <laughs> well, in this case, it is a good day to die. But I mean, it's, it's, again, a terrifying experience going into it. You get to the edge and, and, and it's like jumping off the Grand Canyon in the pitch black of night. It's what it feels like. Yeah. So that's what it takes to get to realization. Okay. And so many of these things, like I said, it's impossible to explain to people what it is to be in that consciousness. Because out, so outwardly, everybody sees the life and it looks the same. Well, they're lying then. You look like a normal person. What are you supposed to do? Have lights glowing up? What? Supposed to float 10 feet off the air? What? Still in a body. Okay? You're still a spirit in the body, and then play out the Parabdha Karma. What you came in, you play out. The Parabdha Karma plays out. That's all. Okay? You don't suddenly, magically look different. Okay? You don't speak well you do speak i take that back you do speak differently for a while because when you first come back out of it you you can't say me my or i it just feels foreign it's not it's not that you're trying to be put on airs or anything it just doesn't feel right it's not the experience so you say this one this one because it's not a feeling of me, my, I. To be able to learn to say me, my, and I again takes a years. It took, took here, it took here about maybe three, four years to be able to say that again. Okay, because it's not the experience. Okay, it's not the experience. So I just wanted to give a people a heads up what it takes to get to realization. You know, you're not going to get there by nominal practices. Okay? It takes very, very, very deep and, again, fully immersed in Kundalini. And, and, and I'm telling you, you know, you have Kundalini going, and it feels like for here, there was about a year, year and a half where I felt like I was literally going to flame on from the out inside. Have you ever seen spontaneous combustion? The people that they find an arm, a little piece of an arm or a leg left, and the rest of the body's consumed from internal out? Well, that's what it feels like. It feels like you're going to spontaneously combust from the inside out, and there will be nothing left but maybe a foot. And you live like that for a good year, year and a half. Try that, okay? Let me know how fun that is for you, okay? <laughs> Do you want to go through that? <laughs> because that's one of the things you go through. You feel as if you're going to spontaneously combust from the inside out. That's how hot it is, okay? Again, people have no idea of the shifts that come and the things one sees. 
get up in the middle of the night and your room is silver. You walk out and it's silver and you see manifestations here and there and it's like, you know, again, you're hearing things, you're seeing things, you're having visions, you're having, you know, you can't imagine. It's like being a shaman on steroids. <laughs> Okay, because again, you go to all these realms, all these lands, you know, all these experiences. You don't need ayahuasca or peyote or any of that when you're in the midst of Kundalini and you are having 24-7 visions and these things coming, okay? So again, people have no idea what it's like. You see somebody here now and all of this stuff has ended. I don't have Kriyas anymore. Oh, I used to have Kriyas. You were doing mantras. You were doing uh, mudras. You were doing all of these things spontaneously. Okay. Not, oh, I'm going to go study that. That would be not. No. And you get Kriyas so bad, it's throwing you around the room, literally, on occasion. Okay. okay. You are doing yoga moves like you can't believe. Okay. All of those things happen spontaneously. And again, this is years and years of years of dedication that you go through these things. And when the end comes, it's nirvana, nibbana, being blown out. All of that drama ends. It's blown out. All of it is blown out. Okay. So if people think they understand what it is to go through that process and wind up in realization, in enlightenment, being woken, I've woken up. People say, well, if you say you're enlightened, you can't be. Buddha said, I am awakened. What do you think that is? Well, Buddha, well, Buddha damn well said he's awakened. Okay? I am awakened. That means I am enlightened. Hello? Earth to, to, earth to woodheads here. 100% said, I am awakened. I have completed. Okay, and then he gave what he could give. And you don't think it was difficult? You see what he went through? First he's starving himself, then he's overindulgent, then he's, you know, and he finally said the way is the middle way. Okay, well, that's what happens. And you have to get there by experience. You have to go through all those different levels and layers and, and process all of it to get to that end point. And again, it's not a game. It's not an intellectual exercise. It's not something one has read in a book and said, oh, it says you're enlightened, so I'm enlightened. I'm already there. And you puff your ego self up, and yet your mind is still having all the drama, and you hear it day and night and try to convince yourself of something else. Okay? without any ideation of what the reality is. Okay. Everyone has the potential to be enlightened because, yes, at the core is that divine is. But if that divine is has not come center point and the mind has not become still, then you are not there. I don't care how much you tell yourself you are. I don't care how many affirmations you do. It is not going to stop the mind and the drama you collect with it. Okay? And this attention as form as a separation. Okay? As an ego. An ego never gets enlightened. People think, oh, the ego's going to get enlightened. I'm going to get enlightened. No, you never get enlightened, okay? <laughs> there is no ego on the planet that is enlightened. Ego is divisionary. If you are in the consciousness 
of divisionary, then you are not enlightened. Okay? Something different. It's a totally different consciousness. Okay? So again, one goes beyond this realm of drama sees through the illusion of it, knows that when you're awake or whether you're asleep, it's still dream state. Same thing. Okay? You got the waking dream, you got the sleeping dream. Okay? And then you wake up. <laughs> and when you're in the midst of Kundalini, trust me, those nighttime dream states can seem more real and more valid than the daytime ones on occasion. Get to that one, okay? Get to that one. And lucid dreaming, aware of dreaming while you're dreaming and you can change it any way you want to. Or being conscious of yourself laying there sleeping and you hear yourself snoring and you see yourself as you are sleeping. Those are just a few of the things that one goes through and experiences along the way, okay? People have no ideas. You go through a period where you can control weather. Okay? I mean, just so many things that come up, powers, this and that, that went, and you transition through it and you go, oh, okay. No biggie. Okay? Some people can get stuck there, though. They get stuck there and then they wrap it around ego and look how big I am and drama and they don't. Let go of it to proceed forward to deeper things. Okay. It takes going forward to the deeper things and letting go of the rest. Okay. So I'm going to leave this here. I just wanted to give a little heads up on what it takes. And these people that come and say, you can't watch TV, you can't this, you can't that. Why not? Why not? Oh, those things weren't around when Buddha was here, so therefore it's, it's invalid. I said, Well, then you all better move out of your homes that you're living in now with electricity and all that, because that wasn't there either. <laughs> That's nothing to do with consciousness. Any of that drama and nonsense that people want to put on things have nothing to do with it. Again, has nothing to do with where you're born, has nothing to do with what you look like, it has to do with the internal journey, okay, through consciousness, with that energy, okay? Surrendering to God, that energy is God. Surrendering into that 100%, okay? So I'm going to leave this here. Hopefully that's cleared up a few things. People understand that it's, you know, that's why so very few get to realization. It's not going to happen in a year. Again, it takes lifetimes. You know, and when you're going through it, if you have a need to know past lifetimes, they will come up. Okay? Okay. They will come up. You will see it. You will relive it. The points that you need to get to move forward, you will relive it. Okay? As if you are there right now. It's that in your face. Okay? And again, the journey is not always pleasant. In fact, most of it is not pleasant. It's going to scare the bejeebers out of you. So if you're not ready to face evil, point blank, if you're scared to death of any challenges, don't. Don't think that you're going to get there. Okay. 
That's why, you know, when I have the internet trolls, I laugh at them. Because they think they've got some power and they've got nothing. Okay? All they've got is confused little egos that are running a mouth. Okay? But if it's really insidious and dark, you've already gone through that. You've already transitioned through that. You already know how to deal with that. And you can see. This is why it's so easy working for here. I do work with some that are psychologists and things and have given methods that work very, very well with people because you have know the mind inside and out because that is what you transition. You transition through the mind and consciousness and all that drama, okay? So you have to know it inside and out, okay? So that's it. And when you're done, you come back into the physical form. And one is, again, uh, constricted by the laws of the universe. How many of the realized masters died from cancer or died from, you know, it, it's again, you know, you're in the form, you, the form deals, it breaks down, you go through all of that stuff, it has nothing to do with anything. Again, that's not gonna change the consciousness, okay? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> things are getting much better again. As you can see, my speaking is getting better. Uh, so whatever that was going on, that mini stroke, whatever it was that happened, uh, again, the, uh, I did have some weakness on one side. It's getting better. That's, again, coming around. I'm fortunate I heal very quickly, usually. <laughs> but again, you know, this is just part of the journey. So... Have a great afternoon, everyone, and I will talk with you soon.